what is branding uh but do you even need one i mean like you want to stand out in the competition or are you uh, is it okay for you to just be like the main two type of business out there uh, where maybe in a crowd of people somebody talking about your business people cannot really pinpoint what you stand for if you are looking for uh the possibility of able to stand out in the competition so that when your color show up when your logo show up and of course when your message show up because the color and the logo those are just uh, some of the the preliminary uh, uh faces of your branding your brand actually is more than that we're talking about uh, what you represent in the market now so that when somebody mentions your name people can know this is what you represent in one of our audio room uh, a couple of weeks ago i was see uh, one person that i already know i interviewed uh, she was in the audience and then i just mentioned her name and I told the audience who she is, what, he, what she represents, what she does. So this is what we want in business is that when people hear your name, they should know what you represent, they should know who you are. So this is essentially what we are talking about here in that you cannot mix up Coca-Cola and Pepsi. They are not the same. They are different type of uh, product that you can have uh, uh, in your house to consume. You see, you cannot mix up Samsung and iPhone. You don't do that you don't make those kind of mistakes because you know what each of them represent they both represent different type of story and it is the story behind them that make you understand that this is actually what i'm going for instead of the other one so it, it basically means when you come out in the public or in the private to talk people know what you represent people know what is the combination of your existence as a business and of course, how do you do that? What are the strategies for you to be able to do that? This is what we are going to be talking about in today's episode of Ubehe Podcast. And I have the honor, of course, to talk to who else than those who are expert in the field. So I'm going to be talking to Damilola Felicia Badmons, who is joining me from UK. She's an expert on corporate and personal branding. Of course, she's going to be responding to all my questions related to branding. I had to build a strong brand. That is what we are looking for. In that when you stand up to talk people know what you represent this is what we are aiming for you are you you represent something in the world and in the marketplace and damilola is going to be sharing with you some important point to help you level up in your branding now let's get started Good morning once again and thank you so much for having me. So my name is Samuela Felicia Badmos. I'm a personal branding consultant and I'm also a founder of a company called Royal Brand Academy where we help people and corporate organizations build their brand on platforms like LinkedIn. So our major platform that we are working on is on linkedin yeah. but if a company wants a bespoke service or something else then we also offer those services uh, so like i was saying before uh, we started to record uh here we do spend a bit of time uh, talking about the individual in this case we would like to learn a bit about you uh of course from your name i can deduce that you that is a yoruba name that is my sister from the from the other side <laughs> yes, yes so yes. but were you born in uh in nigeria or were you born in the uk because right now you are talking from uk right yes 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 i'm actually i was born in nigeria but i moved to the uk in 2022 so i'm in nigeria and basically but i live in the uk at the moment all right that's interesting uh now you need to, you need to take a little bit back to nigeria that is that is important let, let's just um let, let's just have fun about that so where exactly were you born in nigeria and what do you remember of your of you growing up there of course we are talking about personal branding later but we also like to learn about you okay so i lived all my life in lagos nigeria i'm a lagos girl um uh, ikeja to be precise around that access one of the local government area in Lagos, Nigeria. And childhood was good. It was fine. I had protective parents. And I basically my life was basically from school home, church, school home, church. So I think that's how I would like to say my childhood was. 
growing up in Lagos, um, what do you see in front of you? You are still uh, a little young girl and growing up in Lagos, you are moving from church to school, uh, to the house, of course. Um, what do you see in front of you in terms of um, how you were going to uh, project yourself into the future? Like every young girl, there are always concerns, there are always worries. But the truth of the matter is that I I am more of a reserved person. So I'm not that kind of person. I would say that while growing up, I didn't... I was not that kind of person that was always moving around with friends. I had friends, but I was just always mindful of groups. So I really didn't have much pressure because I didn't want to allow myself to be pressured. And I just took life one step at a time and I avoided so many troubles. I think one of the things about young people is that if you let yourself to be influenced, by people around you then you can get influenced but if you try as much as possible to avoid so many troubles things that can jeopardize your teenage years and also your young adult life then if you're someone that can avoid that problems or all of those things then it's just better you do so so that you just don't get yourself in unnecessary trouble and unnecessary pressure as well all right that is very interesting damilola and you see that is something that is actually missing today and most of the time that a lot of uh, young people uh, of course not only young people even okay young people even when most of us were young at the time we have that kind of trap that you like to uh, maybe uh, appease the other people who are not you. <laughs> and I think this is going to be very important just now as we talk about uh, uh, branding, talk about how you present yourself in the world. Where does this idea come to you? Is it from the family or is it something that you learn along the way because of um, maybe some experiences, some encounter? What do you want to say about that? Okay, so... For me, branding, well, I would say that branding just came to me as I grew older. I mean, I've always wanted to do, aside from me studying accounting, I just have this passion for brand images, photographs, how you conduct or comport yourself in public. So I've always had that kind of interesting perception about how individuals are meant to be. So when I, after NYC in school, I thought about my photography and I went into LinkedIn, you know, using LinkedIn to build my personal brand. And along the line, I started talking about the importance of branding in terms of photography. And I realized that branding is actually something that is interesting and people can learn from because branding is an all-in-one package. So it's not just one thing. Photography is also involved in branding. How you dress is also invo involved in branding. How you speak, how people know you, the perception people have of you is branding. So I went on from photography, then I started talking about using LinkedIn as my platform to share my thoughts, to share things that people might not necessarily know or things that people might just forget. So in terms of my belief system, how you conduct yourself, empathy, showing love to people, being nice to people, you know, all of these things are what make us human. So having that conversation and realize that doing this alone has sort of given me a branding perspective and also builds my personal brand and I felt if I've been able to do this for myself then why don't I teach other people how to do the same thing all right all right what you can do for yourself you can also do for other people I, I love that um well how did you learn how to do that I don't know if you want to spend some time talking about that because uh, what I want to believe uh, of course, this is true in my case, and I believe it's true for so many other people, in that we are not born with all the skills that we need to navigate this life. 
And sometimes we have to learn then on the way. Uh, sometimes we learn from other people. Sometimes we learn through our experiences. And uh, so in your case, uh, you were born up, you were born in Lagos, you grew up there, but now you are in the UK. Uh, where did you learn this your branding capability that you cannot help businesses? I would say online because you know, as young people that have the opportunity of using the internet, we all have different ways we use the internet. So I would say that online, like we know we have the offline brand and we have the online brand. Your offline brand is the physical you that people can see. So people can always judge you based on your physical um your physical appearance. I mean, at work, you know, how you talk to people, how you eat in public, not necessarily etiquette, but how you just show what do people have to say about you when in your when you're not in the room that is offline brand but online brand now has to come to deal with your content so if people can see you in person to have a perception of you then how can they know you that's where the power of content comes into play how you speak in public how you write your content how you how you speak in your videos, what is your mindset, what are the things you say. So I would say that I I learned mine obviously from reading and also from communicating. So through the feedbacks of others, that's by the comment section, you would one would know that okay, you are either impacting people positively or negatively. And Content comes in different formats. So how you write also plays a very vital to run. For me, I you learn how to even if you're not nobody is born a writer, except there are some exceptional people, but you also have to learn it in terms of your grammar, in terms of how you arrange your words in orders so that people can be able to understand what it is that you are trying to say. I've, not, I've never really liked videos, but over time, because I started doing content in relation to videos, I sort of get comfortable in front of cameras now. I've never been a podcaster before, but took it upon my challenge to start a podcast and I learned how to build, a, how to um, coordinate my podcast, how to put my words in orders, how to edit, and so on and so forth. So I would say that in terms of learning, you have to do, because if you don't do, you don't learn. So I learned basically by putting all of the things I want to know into action and first doing it for myself before I start doing for others. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So that the way you are talking to people now, uh, you are both talking from what you have learned, maybe uh, reading books or listening to other people, but also uh, what you have done. Because now you can uh, put yourself into it, uh, in your experiences, uh, and of course also some of the mistakes that you have made. Uh, because yes, that is life. Uh, you don't just get uh, all the cards uh, stuck out in front of you, already perfectly arranged. And uh, sometimes you are going to have to uh, trouble the water. You are going to have to. Uh, yeah, sometimes stumble and fall and then rise and fall again and then rise. But of course, you are talking because you have risen. <laughs> you are not on the ground. If you were yes. on the ground, you would not be speaking, you know? Yeah, true. So, <laughs> so when, when you package all this together and somebody were to add, uh, ask you uh, in a very simple way, how do you define brandy or what is your perception of brandy for maybe an amateur, somebody who do not understand what it means? What would you say? Okay, perception of branding is in terms of how do people see you? I mean, beyond your product, beyond your service, how do you want to be perceived? Say, for example, there are some people that have a lot of wisdom embedded in them. But when you hear them speak, you when you hear them speak, you'll be like, wow, you are loaded. But when you ask them, oh, how come you don't share all of these online? Some of them are like, oh, I don't, I don't have that time. But the truth is that 
rather than you keeping all the things that you know to yourself, branding and putting yourself out there in form of content can give people another perception of who you are and can make people learn from you and also um, give you that kind of recognition that you desire. In terms of being a business owner, Branding is also important because we are in the age of competition and we are also in the age where we have so many business people coming forth, so many people embracing the digital market and also social media. So branding comes in forms of you conveying whatever message you have either for your product or for your services to your audience. That means you showing the human part of your business what you do so take for example we have seen a lot of celebrities that they are bringing out a lot of content to make them feel personalized to make them feel personal with their audience that means that many of them are already creating content that makes their audience feel like they know them better some of them share a glimpse of their personal life some of their shares the behind the scenes of what they do so rather than just work 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 their audience see an inner side of them so through what they do other people can contact them and they can get to work together. So in summary, branding is more than just your logo or your product. It is uh, it is building an overall perception really of your company or your products, or even if you're trying to run your business as an individual. But of course, uh, we are coming from Nigeria and I, I want to believe that you care about what is happening in Nigeria. So. Uh, in terms of businesses uh, because sometimes i've had to interview some people here uh, where we talk about um, how can we uh, up our game in nigeria because we want to be able to also dominate the international market uh, thanks also to, to the power of internet now you really do not um, you cannot limit yourself anymore you can be somewhere in a Berkuta and you are doing business uh, with a big company in Washington or in Beijing or in uh, or in Germany, whatever it is that you want to um, uh, work, whoever you want to work with in the world, there is no limitation anymore. Uh, in our time, the idea that the world is a global village is no longer a philosophy, is the reality. So uh, looking at brandy, which is your area of expertise, and because you have grown up in Nigeria, and I believe that you have a lot of people coming from Nigeria also in terms of businesses, and you are living in the UK, and we give you a kind of a double advantage to see the world of branding. Uh, how would you look at maybe how Nigerian businesses or African businesses are taking the idea of branding? How do you see their approach to branding? That is the best way to put it. Um, so the question I want to ask back is, are you talking in terms of the online branding or the offline branding? Uh, well, actually, I will be tempted to look at both, but uh, you can pick the one that you feel is more appropriate. But for me, I really would like to learn both uh, the off and the online. I would say that there is no difference, really, because individuals are different. And in terms of company branding, you know that different countries have different ways they operate and they also have different target markets. I would say that Nigeria is actually trying at least at working in the PR firm. I know some organizations that are doing well in terms of marketing. So I wouldn't say there are much differences, to be honest. I wouldn't say that. As a matter of fact, I would even give it to Nigerians that they are really doing well in terms of building their personal brand because a lot of us Nigerians, we... We are resilient, we you know we like to put ourselves out there. And meanwhile, there are some people that are either white or colored that they just want to be in their space. So I wouldn't say that there are much differences really, because everyone is still is still the same rules that matter. The only thing is just that they are just different demographics that are in context here. So 
the way a white person would communicate with a white person is obviously different from the way a white person would communicate with a black person. The way a white person will sell a product or services to another person will be different from how Nigerians sell to Nigerians. I don't know if that answers the question. Absolutely. And it also opened a, a kind of a small box there that I would like, I would like to think, which mm. is... Um, mm, uh, which is the way that Nigerians uh, communicate to other Nigeria? You know, we represent a very huge force in the world. Um, also in the area of business, uh, you can see this wherever you are, uh, particularly in the diaspora also, because in this case now, we are not playing local, we are playing international. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see that Nigeria really uh, is um, it's a force that you cannot ignore, irrespective of wherever you are, uh, from IT to finance to technology uh, we are there we are there there is no uh, mm -hmm. need uh, even uh, belief in ourselves and this of course can also start from maybe uh, for example I, I live in italy i can see that most of the places where you go you go to buy food uh, here we call it african shop no and most of them are run by nigerians no okay there are also other people that are that are also running their whole shop so uh, both in local i mean in small in small scale and also in large scale uh, Nigerians are there operating in their businesses. So when you say we uh, communicate uh, as Nigerians, so I wanted you to say more about that. What, what do you mean by that? Okay, so I would say that, for example, for Nigerians, it's sometimes difficult to sell to Nigerians. And a lot of Nigerians like to be lied to because a lot of us are always looking for a get which quick scheme. And so that's why some people would say, okay, buy this book and you get one million in two days. And a lot of people get to rush it. But for white people, it's not hard to sell to them as long as they can trust you. Many of them work by referrals. Many of them work by testimonials. So if you want to sell a book to them, it might not be hard to sell to them because many of them are used to reading already. But trying to sell to Nigerians, let's say you want to sell a book, it's going to take forever because a lot of them have a lot of problems they are dealing with already. Now, to not have buying a book <laughs> sometimes can be very difficult for them. So countries differ, communications differ, and that's why that that's why it's important that you create that brand awareness so that when people see you, they can know you enough to say that, okay, when um obi has a book he wants to sell because you've been able to create enough value for them to buy from you it will be easier for you to convert them because they know you and they trust you already all right thank you so much for that clarification that is highly valuable uh all right now i have a curiosity uh, somebody might be asking because now you have broke that down for people to understand which sort of help um an, indiv an individual or a business owner to even see that there are ways that maybe you might need to approach the Nigerian market, which of course I, I agree with you 100% because people are different. And the way you talk, okay, I uh, from the background of storytelling, uh, we often say that when you are in storytelling, okay, in this case, we are looking at business storytelling, it is uh, vitally important that you understand the audience that you are communicating to the audience you are telling your story to. Because if you don't know that audience, uh, your story is not going to land. And if your story doesn't land, then the people are not going to react uh, uh, the way that you want it to react. Because you are not telling your story just for the sake of telling story or because you want to occupy time. You are telling story at least within the area of business because you are expecting a certain reaction uh, from the people. And for you to do that, you need to be able to, uh, to touch their heart string. And for you to do that, again, you need to know them. Uh, so I really uh, appreciate that explanation, but I think it's very important. Uh, having said that, somebody might be asking, are there some key principles uh, to bear in mind when trying to create a strong brand today, uh, looking at 2023? Okay, we are moving to 2024. What would you say about that? Like, What are the key principles uh, to, to put in mind? Mm, okay, I think I would, I would explain five. Number one, consistency. That means that you have to ensure 
that you have a uniform and consistent message. You should have a consistent visual identity. That means that you should not be using a color red for maybe a quote you want to do today and then color yellow tomorrow. You should try to have a good visual identity in terms of how you dress. Do people know you to be someone that wears native or are you someone that just wears shorts and then a t-shirt? You know, having understanding how you want to be seen online plays a major role. You should be consistent also with how you are across all platforms. I know it can be difficult trying to look different. Say, for example, you like to dance and you have a professional appearance on LinkedIn and you're like, okay, I just want to show the... um funny side of me yes it's good to show that funny side of you but depending on what you're doing if you're trying to create business opportunities with high profile people then you need to understand that maybe that might not be the approach or maybe you should have another page that is different from your official name so that when people checks you out on different platforms they sort of realize that okay you are who you claim to be Another one is going to be being authentic. That means that you need to stay true. You're true to your values and your identity because being authentic builds trust and credibility. So you have to be authentic. Another one is being relevant. So that means that you have to stay relevant to your target audience. You need to be flexible. You need to understand that for you to communicate to people, just like every company brand does, they try to rebrand. They try to do a lot of survey to understand what is trending, what does their audience want. So in building your own personal brand as well, you have to follow these principles. You have to stay relevant, understand your target market needs, and also adapt to changes in the market. Another one would also be differentiation. That means you have to highlight what sets you apart from others. You also have to identify and emphasize your unique value proposition, meaning that you have to know what sets you apart. Sometimes it can be difficult to want to feel different, but a lot of times when you work on what makes you different from other people and then you try to stick with that, you can be able to create a different niche from different people. The last one would be you have to have emotional connection with your audience using the example i made earlier about celebrities trying to share glimpses of their personal life let's say sharing photos of their children or with their husband or a day in their life people like things like that because it shows them reminds them that the influencer or the celebrities they are following are humans and they also have the same challenges that they have they also go through the same thing they do um that alone creates that emotional connection and because you've been able to create that emotional relationship with your audience it can help you to create a lasting impression so in summary be consistent be authentic be relevant be different and also have an emotional connection with your audience these are a key points, uh, five key points that people really need to pay attention to if they want to build a, a strong brand. And I think a strong brand is really uh, very important, like, uh, like you have explained. Um, I don't know if there are some examples of brand that you would like to share with people. It could be maybe the one that you have uh, been observing because, okay, this is your area. Uh, if somebody wants to find out more information about it, they will definitely uh, reach out to you because, uh, you are paying more attention to this than than other. Actually, what, what I understand about this is uh, uh, when we talk of uh, specialization, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, that is the only thing that we can do as human beings, as species. It just means that we decide to focus, no? Because uh, you that is a brand expert now, you could also have become, uh, how do I put it, a designer, a design expert, no? Um, but it will mean that for you to become an expert in design, you are going to really focus on that. 
And yeah. because you are you are limited in both in your resources and your time, there is no way you can focus on being a best designer and also be a best brand expert. It is not going to work because you cannot multiply time. So uh, in that sense, I mean, now that uh, you have been able to focus on one, you are an expert in that, you can continuously uh, build on that. One example I usually go, uh, give in that line is that, for example, in my place where I grew up, I grew up in, uh, in a village in, in Urumi, which is in the south of Nigeria. So there was a man that I know there. Uh, okay, the man is late now. He was doing ghost meeting. Uh, in that if you needed to uh, buy, I don't know, maybe you want to prepare your knife, he's the one you usually go to. If you want to prepare your gun, if you are the hunter, he's the guy who is able to do that. Uh, of course, he does it, and he does it very well. Okay, sometimes you also have a lot of visit from the police. <laughs> you know what I mean, no? Yeah. So, uh, if you want to prepare trap, because I used to do that a lot when I was in the village. I used to uh, set trap in the forest, and maybe in our farm, to be able to catch a grass cutter, or maybe uh, other, other rodent that we can use in the, in the, in the house, no? So what I really want to point that in terms of branding is that this individual, or actually not only in terms of branding, but in terms of specialization or becoming expertise in a specific field, is that because this person uh, that we call the Jogun was always in one place and he was continuously doing what he was doing, there was nobody, there was nobody else that was better than him. Mm. And, and I believe that is really what it, it's about in, in refining our skill. In that, of course, you cannot become expert in everything, but when you have pick a particular a particular space, a particular area, if you continue to hone your skill on that, of course, of course, you are going to become very good in that area. So uh, I, I think that is very fundamental. Yeah, now, having sure. said that, when you look at different brands in the world today, uh, which one would you pick out uh, for people to learn from, for people to use as a kind of a reference for themselves if they want to learn more? And why would you pick these ones? I don't know, maybe two or three, or even one, I don't know, uh, some good brand out there that you think you have learned from, and people should also learn from. And then, of course, you need to explain to us uh, why you pick these brands. Okay. There are quite a lot of big brands out there. In terms of beverages, um, I would say that, let me use Pepsi, for example. Pepsi have been able to identify themselves as a brand that works with the entertainment industry. Um, that's why sometimes when you look at Pepsi adverts, this is Pepsi in terms of Nigerian market. So when you look at Pepsi, you realize that many of Pepsi products have, in terms of um, their adverts, you can see Leon Messi, you can see Neymar. I don't know if they are still their brand ambassadors, but as at the time that I know of, maybe many years ago, whenever I'm watching Coca-Cola, Pepsi adverts, I mean, you get to see Tiwa Savage, you get to see Davido, and so many artists like that. So because of they want to show themselves as people that, you know, support entertainment. Whenever there was a time I went for a concert and Coca Pepsi was the brand that was sold because they were an they were their official sponsor. So Pepsi have been able to craft themselves in a niche that shows that they support entertainment. And so when people are thinking of entertainment or celebrities are thinking of soft drinks to put in their concerts, Pepsi would go to mind. When we're also looking at cars, you know, we have um, Ford, we have Peugeot, we have Ferrari, we have... Mercedes bands, all of these brands have also been able to craft a name for themselves. Anyone that thinks of bands, thinks of luxury, thinks of expensive. And so because they've been able to create that kind of idea and how do brands like this create that kind of perception in people's mind, do it they are maybe their mission statements or their tag names or things that accompany their adverts, maybe things like 
um, be expensive or things like drive us, buy us, buy luxury. You know, people that like luxury items want to feel different from every other person. Also, brands like Tesla, they've been able to identify themselves as cars that are very unique. So for what makes this brand strong are like their brand identity. So in terms of their design, in terms of their taglines, in terms of their brand personality, how do you, how, what do people think about when they think about them? When people think about Coca-Cola, what do they think? People think about Coca-Cola is being tagged along with happiness. People are happy when they are drinking Coke. When you're thirsty, you want Coca-Cola because you want to feel refreshed and that is why coca-cola gets to advertise their brand that way when you think about mtn everywhere you go you get to realize that even when you're in a very in a place where you feel like no network might be there at all mtn gets to pop out so all of these brands work so hard to ensure that they create a difference for themselves and also that also gets in terms of um for branding, companies also try to do things like CSR, corporate social responsibility, so that they can impact their environment. And when people also say that brands are going out of their way to make a difference in their area, people get to trust them more. And that way, brands can also sell more and position, position themselves well in the market. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you for that. All right, um, positioning. Uh, that, that is very important for me now. Uh, in fact, before you use the word positioning, you use another word uh, there, which is differentiate, uh, differentiation. So I don't know uh, how much these terms uh, could make in branding or in personal branding, whether corporate or personal, uh, differentiation and positioning yourself. Uh, how relevant are these when one is talking about branding? And how uh, might one actually approach them uh, to build a strong brand? Well, what would be your take on that? So it takes a lot of work to put all of this into action because it takes a lot of time for people to trust you. And that means that you have to stay consistent in what you do and what you believe in. So in terms of differentiation, it might feel foolish at first, but over time, when you've been able to make people see reasons why you're different, then they can begin to buy into your idea. So that is why um, differentiation also works along with being authentic. Because if you are trying to say, oh, you want to be different and it still doesn't align with who you are as a person or as a company, it doesn't align with your company values, it doesn't align with your company goals and missions, you might get to a point where you feel stuck. So in the terms of differentiation, okay, what makes me different? What can I do differently? If you're someone that may be trying to sell shoes, for example, you can say, okay, everyone is always putting on, everyone is always putting on shoes um, for their adverts. What can I do differently? You might say that, you know what, I want to start act, adding accent to what I'm doing for content. Maybe you go out and then your shoe is showing, or maybe you say you want to add a proper photo shirt, like everyone wearing a complete outfit with the shoes to sell your product. That is brand differentiation. And when you begin to do that, you begin to have a place in people's minds and you now begin to position yourself as one that helps people not only know the kind of clothes they can wear on their shoes, but it also gives a perception of how that shoes plays, how that shoe will look like. It may be a corporate setting or in a party. So you have to sit down to think through this and you have to stay consistent so that people will know that this is your brand message. And then over time, your right target markets will begin to come to you. Okay, now um, let, let look at an individual, uh, maybe this uh, business owner uh, is in Nigeria, or it can even be here in the diaspora, maybe in the UK or in, in the US or in any other part of the West where you still have 
uh, a considerable amount of uh, Africans here. Okay, I'm saying African because our target audience are actually Africans and African diaspora. So <laughs> uh, those are the people that we are caring about. It doesn't mean that other people cannot uh, consume our content, but we know who our primary audience are. All right, now, say maybe in the West or right there in the UK where you are, that is a business that want to that have not yet paid attention to branding before now who haven't listened to you um your explanation have sort of fully uh, in love with the idea and want to start so what in your view will be some of the key step-to-step -step guide on how to create a strong branding what should be done first uh, after that and after that uh, so what would be your recommendation in that line Okay, first thing is define your purpose. That means know what, understand what your company is, uh, stands for, understand your vision and your mission. Because there's a saying that when things go wrong or when things go confused, when things go wrong, you can always fall back to what you stand for. You can always go back to look at your mission statement or your goals and say, okay, why did I start this thing in the first place? So you need to define your purpose. Say, for example, you marketing. If marketing is a little, branding falls under marketing, but they are different things. So marketing in terms of marketing has to do with you spending a lot of money, maybe trying to bring your product or service to the front of your audience. But branding is more of you establishing what your organization stands for or what you stand for. And then your target audience gets to know you. So it's more like a reverse approach. So for you to do this, you need to understand your purpose. You need to understand what defines you. Then you also need to know who are your audience. You need to understand your audience behavior where are they are they on tiktok are they on linkedin are they on um what platform so you need to understand where these people are next one is develop a consistent identity so you need to know okay what are my colors brand identity comes in terms of your brand colors your logo your fonts so that you get to work with the right thing so that you don't start using different fonts, different colors, and at the end of the day, your platform look very messy. Next one also will be create quality content. So content is the bedrock of anything. Content comes in different formats. Content in terms of videos, newsletter, posts, text, podcasts, um, YouTube videos and many more like that. So you need to create a quality content strategy because it's through that content that you create that will make people come to your platform. Then lastly would be engage with your audience. So engaging comes in forms of maybe engage with people via social media, going for events, like I mentioned, CSR, um, putting an event together and making, sorry, I have, um, there's a noise coming around my environment. So uh -huh. um, engaging with them, will help you so it's a step-by-step -step process and it's something that you just have to continue to nurture the first four steps define your purpose know your audience develop a consistent identity great quality content and engaging with your audience this great quality content and engaging with your audience is a long-term thing so once you've been able to identify your three you know that the four and five are long-term approach and you just have to follow through with that. Okay, you are here now. This is an opportunity for people to learn from you. Um, now, when we learn from you, when we learn from individual, we also try to learn from uh, their ups and downs. Uh, of course, that from the point of view of storytelling again, uh, that means that we are talking to a human being. Otherwise, uh, if your experiences were generated from the computer, there will probably not be any error there. Yeah. Uh, of course, people will not relate, no, because people mm -hmm. are normal human beings, you know. So what I want to ask you is, was there a time that you didn't know about branding, that you didn't know how to brand yourself very well? Were there some mistakes that you made? And if any, how did you correct them so that people can learn from you? 
please share with me. Okay. Well, we all are learning and I wouldn't say that I'm where I want to be yet. I mean, everything about us is growth. But I think that a particular experience that I will remember is when I was still trying to um, find my feet in. I used to do photography, so I want. I used to do personal branding photography. So I wanted to switch to personal branding itself rather than like the old package entirely. So in switching, I. I wouldn't say that it was wrong. I would just say that it took a lot of time because I wanted to transition my audience in a very seamless way. And so it's more like you pivoting from one one platform, from one occupation to another. And when you have an audience that is sort of used to the first thing you're doing, it takes a lot of skills and it takes a lot of um, patience to eventually move them to your present position because a lot of people make the mistake of okay i want to switch to something else and they don't carry their audience along say for example you're a graphics designer and then you want to move on to um ui ux design or you or you've pivoted your career into tech and you have a lot of audience that are graphics designer it will be very unfair of you to just move your audience to where you are right now and I mean, moving where moving people that have been following you to another career of yours without properly explaining to them. So what I did was for personally for me, I sort of did a I did a lot of storytelling and I did a lot of um general kind of content in terms of okay, your values, um, sharing content about my faith, sharing content about five things you should do if you are born in out, you know, all this kind of generic content. And when I saw that my audience were I was gathering more audience from different walks of life because branding encompasses everybody. So I started to do all this kind of content. And when I saw that, okay, I've achieved the right amount of audience I was looking at or I've achieved um, where I want to be in terms of pivoting, I now started focusing more on personal branding. And personally, for me, I get bored easily. So talking about the same thing over and over again can be boring for me. So what I tend to do now is now look at, rather than just saying, okay, this is how you be your brand every day. I had a different kind of content into what I do, videos, more like what does it mean to be authentic, you know, other interesting things about branding, why you should build your brand, um, different things you should consider when building your brand so that, yes, it can be, it, it is the same message, but I have just been able to create something different in the sense that different topics are shared. So my audience know that when they see me pop up in their feed, they can always get something from Dami and not necessarily the same thing they hear 10 to 20 people say in a day. Now, are there some elements uh, that make a strong brand? Because now uh, you are, of course, an expert in this area. And uh, sometimes you might see some some business owner who have maybe approached a, a branding for their business before. Uh, maybe it's not working for them. And they, and they bring the package to you and say, this is who we are. This is what you represent. This is uh, who we are serving. This is how we position ourselves in the world uh, or in the marketplace as it were. And of course, as an expert, you are going to dot all what is happening. You are going to examine what is happening. And you are going to give your verdict that, okay, your approach is maybe good. Of course, if it's good, they will be getting the result now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there is something missing here. With me, you you know what is working and what is not working. So I'm sort of asking you to to tell me what are, what are some elements that actually make a brand a good one, so that you say, okay, by the time a brand have this and this and this correct, it means that is a good branding or something like that. Please help me understand. Mm, okay. So what makes a strong brand? 
Number one, you need to identify your brand identity. So when you people know you through your logos, through your colors and your design, I mean, we all know Coca-Cola through their fonts. It's a little bit, it, I think it's, the fonts is different. We know the color and we can be able to, when we see, when we look at Pepsi and Coca-Cola, we can be able to differentiate that Pepsi is not the same thing with um Pepsi is the same thing with Coca-Cola. When you see um Pepsi and Mirinda, you would know that the colors and what they represent are different. So brand identity, you need to identify what your brand stands for. Next one is your brand personality. So the human characteristics that is associated with your brand, your brand tone. So personality, like we said, in terms of Coca-Cola, um, everybody wants to drink Coke to be refreshed. We call Coke cells that when you drink them, you get refreshed. Mercedes Benz says that when you drive them, you sort of feel luxury. So another one would be brand promise. What are the commitments and the expectation that you set for your customers regarding your product and services? For me, my company, Royal Brand Academy, we sort of say that we will brand you with style and elegance. That means that when you come to us, you can expect that you're going to um, be branded in an elegant way, in a way that is sophisticated. So your brand promise plays an important role in having a strong brand. Another one would be brand positioning. How does your brand yeah, how does your brand function among your competitors in the midst of your competitors? Where does your brand fall in? How is your brand perceived when they are competitors? So you need to position your brand. Sometimes it can be expensive in terms of doing things like this because um, let's say, for example, you want to you want, there is a major event and they're calling for sponsors and you sort of feel like your company is going to benefit in terms of brand positioning when your company um sponsor this event they might require you to bring money to be a sponsor so money sometimes can be involved if you want to get to that level you want to get to then lastly would be your brand experience how does your audience feel when they work with your brand we all know that there are some brands that when we buy from them media their customer service it's not working or a lot of things are not working well you know, your brand experience with how you make your audience feel, how you make your customer feel can either break or make your brand. So brand identity, brand personality, your brand promise, your brand positioning, and overall your brand experience can make your brand feel very strong in the market. Now, when people talk of branding, there is this uh, two terms that usually come to mind. Of course, I know you are doing corporate branding. Are you also doing personal branding? Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Uh, that is actually where I'm going. Uh, corporate branding or business branding or personal branding, business. Uh, yeah, some, sometimes it do come along and sometimes it, it, can really, it can really get confusing for some people. Could you please help to differentiate for us uh, what is the difference between a corporate uh, business or personal branding? What are the differences between them? Um, it's just simple. Corporate has to do with organization, with your business. That means trying to build your company um, and trying to create a perception in front of your audience or your target market. Why for personal branding is more of you as a person. So the business called you, that means you yourself. How do people see you? So that because sometimes it's risky when you try to make your business yourself. What if you want to deviate? What if you want to move? We can see that Bill Gates, even though he's linked with Microsoft, he has also been able to build himself as an individual person. We see Barack Obama before Barack Obama was associated with or let's even say Michelle Obama, they were associated with being president of the United States. But after they left, they still continued doing their personal brand in terms of teaching people what they know, in terms of speaking at events. Why there are some presidents that have gone, they've, they've done things, but as soon as they leave 
you know, the White House or or their presidential villa, they just disappear. So that is individual branding because you're trying to make people still know you. So you need to go out of your way to show up as compared to a company brand that theirs is more of a corporate organization, either through a product or through a service. But for individual brand, it has to be a human being. I don't know if I get it correctly. Are you were saying that... Um... Uh, personal branding uh it's better to go personal branding or corporate branding i don't i, I didn't get that part very clear is there anyone you would recommend no obviously if you are so we own and realistically we know that there are different businesses there are some businesses that are so proprietorship let's say you are a fashion designer there are times when you do the work by yourself. So that means you are the you're the marketing manager, you are the apprentice, you're the one that sews the clothes, you're the CEO, you're the delivery man. All of those things are an in one man business. So because you you gain your money through yourself, obviously you have to market yourself alongside your business. But there's a time comes when your business is now very big and then you can have staff, you can have somebody that manages the company. You don't have to sew again. You can just supervise. Then that is when it's considered a business because the business can stand on its own. So once you've got into that level, you can say, you know what, I want to be able to differentiate myself from that business then that's when because we know that there is there are more things there are more to us and if we just limit ourselves to just one thing we get limited but when you get to that point of saying that you know what there are a whole lot of things about me that I would like to share to the world aside from being a fashion designer I like to write books I like to speak to people I want to impact people never to give up in what it is they are doing I would like to write a book in form of how to build a successful business as a fashion designer. So business, let's say the name of your business is ABCD Limited. ABCD Limited is working on its own to get inclined. You as an individual, you moved from you selling only your business to now building your brand in terms of um showing people more about you, speaking at events, writing books, doing webinars, if you want to gain money from your personal self. I don't know if that answered the question. It does, it does. Thank you so much for that. Um, and now there's something you said before that, that I want us to visit a little bit now. And when you were talking, or when I asked you to explain uh, your personal experience, no, uh, in your growing, no, because of course uh, you also said it that we are all growing. Uh, nobody was born with a silver spoon, or your. Okay, some people are. <laughs> in terms of our businesses, what we are doing, uh, none of us just have all the all the expertise with you as you were starting. Now. So sometimes uh, we learn also uh, uh, through our mistakes. But when you were explaining that, uh, you did say something to the FA that uh, there was a point that you have to move, you have to change your business, you have to uh, pivot, you know, sort of change the setup of your business. Uh, and that also lead to you taking your audience along. Uh, there was something that you learned uh, along that line. Now, I'm imagining that uh, there is a business out there who maybe have got it to the point that they want to switch yeah, they want to maybe change, and therefore by changing, meaning also changing their branding. And so where I'm actually going there is, uh, are there some situation that uh, that tells you that it is time for you to change your branding? This might affect maybe the color, or uh, your message, uh, how you position yourself in the world, of course, or the component of branding, which are usually this condition. And when it happens, which is the best way to do it? Uh, so that uh, there are no um, there are no fallout uh, in, the, in your to your business. Yeah, sometimes that branding might not be necessary, and there are sometimes that branding might be necessary. But let's say you want to pivot into doing something else. I also need to say that, like I mentioned earlier, personal branding is different from a business branding. For a personal brand, if you're trying to pivot, then 
your your phones and all of those things belong to you i might there might not be a need except necessary and for personal brand for moving or for you to change your brand identity what is really needed the most is your brand story um, rather than text or fonts because it's not a business brand but if it's a business brand then things that you might be looking at are maybe the decisions of the shareholders of the company looking at okay is this change necessary and maybe doing some surveys to find out what um, your audience wants I mean MTN changed its logo in yes, I believe in 2021. And though a lot of people were not satisfied with that change over time, because MTN knew what they were looking at because they wanted to move on to the 5G um, terrain. They, I think they just wanted something different. And over time, their audience became used to it, even though they had a lot of um, negative calls or negative messages on social media. So you just need to know, okay, is this the time for us to change? What is the reason for changing? Does this still represent our brand? And give it a lot of time for it to come for the audience to accept it. All right. Thank you so much for that. That, that is important for us. Uh, yeah, we're asking you too many questions today, but of course this is your area, so we have the chance. Uh, we are, you are not here all the time, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I'm sort of uh, another curiosity. That I'm another curiosity I'm having just now is um, it had to do with your with your client. Uh, of course, by uh, your client, I'm trying to sample what is the opinion of the people out there. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, what do your client complain to you about creating a strong brand? Many of them say that they don't know where to start from, but through surveys, through trying to work with them, I realized that many of them just don't see the importance yet. Because like they say, when you understand something, you make room for it. So many of them say, oh, yes, they want to do a brand, they want to bring their company up forward, but they are not ready to make that sacrifice in terms of either creating the content or even following up with it. So um, I've had clients that would say, okay, I want you to manage my social media page. And then we create the content. We give it to the client. It takes like two or three days for them to approve. And, you know, we keep having the back and the back and forth here and there. So I would say the major challenge is that, yes, they want that change, but many of them still don't understand why they want it. And because of that lack of understanding, they just don't give us as much priority as they should. What uh, for you are some of the things that uh, a brand or a business should avoid uh, in order to create a strong brand? What are the mistakes that ne they need to avoid along the way? Mistakes, inconsistency, and this follows through to what I just mentioned. You have to stay, try to stay consistent. I don't, yeah, I know it's hard, but just try avoid conflicting messages or visuals that doesn't that doesn't match your brand so that you don't confuse your audience tomorrow you can start talking about um, productivity when you are not even being productive yourself so you have to stay you have to avoid inconsistency you have to avoid the lack of authenticity that means you have to be genuine because that genuity is what would carry you to the end. Because if you try to start building your brand on the lie, you're going to get caught. Because if, for example, you get interviewed by two or three different people, a time will come where you might even forget that your lie that you said. And by the time people start looking at your story, they realize that, uh-uh, this story is not consistent with this other one. So you have to avoid being on inauthentic then another one is ignoring feedback that means you have to pay attention to your audience you have to pay attention to what they are saying and try to adapt it to your brand strategy sometimes you might not like um critics or criticism but I, I mean there was a time that i was creating content on linkedin and Somebody reached out to me and said, oh, I really love how you do your content, but your content are always very long. 
And because of time, some people might just see and scroll past. And I didn't take that as an offense. I just took it as a way for me to improve. And so I just try as much as possible to put my message straight and direct and avoiding unnecessary information. So being authentic is important. Another one is over promising and under delivering. Don't over promise and don't under deliver. If your brand says that they are going to deliver something, don't try to say that they will deliver your items overnight. You know, so because when you put your client expectation onto something, they might just feel like you didn't do well if you don't meet up to what you've promised. Then finally, will be ignoring your target audience. That means that um, you have to tailor your brand to resonate to your audience rather than trying to please everybody. Sometimes not everybody will buy from you. So the let's say you have a let's say you have 10,000 people following you and maybe just 2,000 people are your target audience. Because you feel like your target audience are little, if you try to avoid them or ignore them, over time you might eventually lose the 10,000. So you need to focus on creating content that works with those 2,000 people and eventually those other 8,000 people or might not be your audience, might eventually become your audience at the end of the day. So in summary, um, things to avoid, lack of authenticity, inconsistency, ignoring feedbacks, over-promising and under-delivering, and finally ignoring your target audience. Now, people that have listened to this uh, uh, interview to this point, they are interested, they want to connect with you, they want to work with you. Uh, how can they reach you? Which is the best way to get to meet you? Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best way at Damilola Felicia Badmos on LinkedIn or just type my name on Google. Um, I've been able to create a very strong online presence that once you just type that name on Google, it just directs you to my LinkedIn profile. Oh, right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Damilola. Uh, now, we have gotten almost to the end of it. So what would be your final thought here? Maybe an advice, or maybe something that you wanted to say. I didn't ask you. You know, I'm not able to know everything. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Please yeah. go ahead and say that. Um, it's been a fantastic interview so far. Thank you so much for having me. I think a few words I would just like to drop is that we are in the data age and it's not ending anytime soon. Nobody's going to take your place. Yes, AI is here to come, but you have to come out and start positioning yourself because the more you delay, the more difficult it is for you to penetrate into the market. So don't be afraid. Your personal brand is you, you are your personal brand. And also for corporate organizations trying to see how they can sell themselves better, your employees, the people that you have in your organization can be amazing cheerleaders to your company so don't be scared of it come out and brand yourself thank you so much for that damilola i appreciate the conversation really have been a pleasure here thank, thank you so much for having me you're welcome have a good time and bye bye, you too. bye.